has returned to Skyrim. This festival is known by many different names. Some call it All Hallows Eve. Others, the Witches Festival. Yet others know it as Samhain. And some simply call it Halloween, but whatever the name, it's the time of year when the veil between the realms of the living and the realms of the dead is at its thinnest. And are 
inside wind elms, ancient walls, and it's apparent that the citizens' enthusiasm for All Hallows' Eve was not limited to exterior decorations, because in known as jack-o'-lanterns carved in the ghoulish visage of uh, the hollow jack himself an erstwhile daedric lord these carved pumpkins are said to ward off evil spirits associated with this time of year. And I do believe I hear in the distance the faint sound of a restless soul, a spirit bound to this plane, unable to pass on realms beyond, or perhaps returned for this night only to wrap up some unfinished business. The citizens here, however, don't seem too concerned about the spiritual presence, and in fact, they embrace this time of year the spooky goings on that come with it. Here at the bloody tankard, a mysterious and ominous individual hawks his disturbing wares. This leathery faced Skyrim, an unwary adventure. 
adventure might stumble across enormous frostbite spiders, very unpleasant creatures, but normally they stay away from the cities. However, during the witches' festival, this way in the poorer parts of Windhelm, the area formerly known as the Snow Quarter, these days known as the Grey Quarter, which is a pejorative term. So given because of refugees who have made their home here after the events of the Red Year and the disruptions in Morrowind. Even here in the Grey Quarter, there's some good cheer for All Hallows' Eve, as well as this very disturbing some kind, a creature perhaps animated by necromantic magic, which is of course exceptionally illegal here in Skyrim, or perhaps it's merely an illusion here to scare the citizens of Windhelm, send a tingle down their spine. None of them seem unduly concerned by the grotesque beast's presence. One must presume that it's all part of the fun. of Windhelm are still spooky in their own way. These ancient, ancient, twisting ways, stones worn by centuries and centuries of individuals. One can only imagine the dark deeds that have been committed here over the generations. Murders, no doubt. Oh dear, though. Back in the central courtyard, by Candle Hearth Hall, things aren't quite as spooky. Not quite so creepy. Except, of course, for 
the witches' festival decorations, which festoon many surfaces. I am not sure if this mass of spider webs is natural, created by those spiders we saw earlier, or merely a decoration. What I do know is that this headstone is not normally here, so it must be seasonal decor. However, the plaque to Harold, which sits behind this jack-o'-lantern here, now that, that is authentic. And the skulls strung across this entrance, one hopes they are not authentic. And this terrifying beast is a uh, seems to have decided to take up residence in this entryway here. Oh, thank goodness. I was concerned that we would have to get close to it to walk past it. This might be one of the largest pumpkins I have ever seen. A magnificent hollow jack lantern, to be sure. as is this one. They seem to have spared no expense here. In the castle courtyard. Outside the palace of kings. And the guards here don't seem to be bothered by any of the some decor or a grotesque creature wandering about so I choose to take that as a sign that we don't need to worry either. No, nope. doesn't look worried. Although I must say these many skeletons hanging over the front doors are and knowing the kind of folks who take up residence here in the palace, I wouldn't put it past them to string up some real skeletons for a laugh. The storm cloaks can be quite savage, given the opportunity. Perhaps those are the skeletons of Imperial soldiers that ran afoul of Stormcloak patrols. Who knows? Who knows? The sky continues to be absolutely gorgeous. and mist obscuring the stars making for a very spooky atmosphere and the masser still way up there in the sky casting its brilliant gossamer moonlight down upon
upscale district of Windhelm. Some very lovely manor houses around here. Do you suppose they celebrate All Hallows Eve and the Witches' Festival? It turns out they most certainly because Windelm is so very old. It has ancient graveyards contained within its walls. One such graveyard is right here, full of crumbling stone monuments going back centuries and centuries. Spirit. The spirit perhaps is bound to one such grave. Who can say? Only the spirit knows. They don't seem inclined to divulge their secrets. And I wish they would because I would dearly love to know what this creature is. Look at this spirit. It appears to be some kind of mushroom ghost. Ooh, and another spooky spider. Let's sidestep it. Don't want to accidentally tread on it. I bet it would be crunchy. Ugh. Another odd mushroom spirit over here. very small skeletons. There's no way those are real. Unless, oh gosh, that's morbid. Unless they're children 
corpse skeletons perish in thought. I won't even entertain it. The silhouettes of the gargoyles against the sky are very spooky. And do you hear that? Listen. <laughs> it looks like one of the restless spirits out here tonight is that of a deceased blacksmith. Even in death, they will not leave their forge, their sharpening wheel. Those 
now my toes are starting to warm up already. Yes, this is what I was looking forward to. A wonderful, cozy spot to while away the hours here on All Hallows Eve. And my dear friends, thank you so much for joining me. support. 